Good afternoon, this is Dr. Lewis Blevins of Pituitary World News with a very interesting uh, radiology study in a patient with a pituitary adenoma. I'm looking at the sagittal films at the moment. This is the sphenoid sinus. We should see the pituitary here in just a moment. Starting to see the gland. Here's the infundibulum. This looks like a tumor. That's some anterior gland. And you can see this patient has a macroadenoma, a small one of the pituitary gland. Here you can see tumor uh, in the carotid siphon indicating this tumor is either compressing or invading the cavernous sinus on that side. Let's switch to the coronal images and you can see here, this is the tumor and the carotid uh, compression or the cavernous sinus compression of tumor budding the carotid artery sphenoid sinus cavity, going backwards, here's tumor, normal pituitary here, here's the pituitary stalk. All of this is tumor that I'm circling now. More tumor, visual pathways, the tumor is uh, underneath the visual pathways which are draping the tumor is one thing that we'll often say about that. Um, Again, this bright part here is a pituitary stalk. It's deviated towards the left. So this patient has an interesting history. He has a, a, a gonadotroph adenoma. His FSH level was about 70. His LH was about 12. His testosterone level was close to 1200. So he is one of the rare patients that have hypergonadism, uh, or what used to be referred to as testotoxicosis due to having uh, a gonadotroph adenoma producing functional gonadotropins driving testicular production of testosterone. He was very fertile, had a high uh, libido, and now after surgery, his normal pituitary gland is suppressed because we took the tumor out, his testicles stopped making testosterone, but the high levels of testosterone previously suppressed the normal gonadotrophs. His pituitary function has is normal, so I would expect that his testosterone levels will be normal too, but it may take a while for that to actually um, uh, awaken, if you will, so that we can see uh, return to normal uh, testosterone levels. Uh, his libido is down, and uh, we're gonna hope that his testosterone levels will come back up to normal so we wouldn't have to treat him with testosterone, and I think that'll be the case. It's a fascinating patient, fascinating clinical scenario, we, we had a, another similar patient about a year, year and a half ago. In my career, I've seen about five men who had uh, high testosterone levels as a consequence of a gonadotroph adenoma. Usually these are non-functioning tumors and they're the most common of all the non-functional tumors. When we do studies in the lab, we'll see there were gonadotroph adenomas even though the patient presented with hypogonadism. But this is sort of the flip side of the usual story. And, uh, and the scans are great and illustrative as well, so I thought I'd show these today. Uh, hope you learned something. Uh, this is Dr. Lewis Blevins, Pituitary World News. Have a wonderful afternoon.